Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayemi Zvachim Chaf Zayin. We begin on Chaf Vav Amabes, three lines off the bottom of the Yom and Mesevei. Here comes Akasha, Akasha on Shmuel. This takes us back to the Mishnah, where the Kain did the, the Zerika, the application of the, of the blood on the Mizbeach, in the wrong place. Slightly wrong location, meaning it was on the Mizbeach, but in the, uh, the wrong area of the Mizbeach. It's supposed to be... On the upper half of the Mizbeach, he placed it on the bottom half, right? There was that uh, dividing line running across, you know, the halfway point of the, of the Mizbeach, you know, horizontally on the, on the wall of the Mizbeach. Some carbonates have their blood placed above the line, some below the line, and he mixed it up. He was overwhelmed, a lot of carbonates with different, uh, uh, you know, specifications, and he mixed things up. Mishnah says the carbon is puzzled. That's the wording of the Mishnah. Carbon is puzzle, but there's no kares involved, meaning it's just plain puzzle. It's not like, you know, pigul, anything like that. Shmuel explains that really the carbon is kasher. There is kapara accomplished, but the owner, despite him getting the kapara, he cannot eat the basar. The basar is off limits. The owner of the kain cannot have the basar because it wasn't the carbon wasn't processed properly. The, the dam was placed in the wrong uh, location. But uh, in the Pasuk we see, as long as the blood reaches the Mizbech in some context, Kapara has been accomplished. That was Shmuel's novel explanation um, in our Mishnah. Mesvi, here comes Akash. And Shmuel who says, Even the Zerika, which is slightly out of place, is considered as though it reached the right destination, as long as it was somewhere on the Mizbeach. So we have a, a b'risa. The Kayin, you know, did the Shechita, or during the Kabbalah, or during the Halacha, and he's thinking, he's planning on doing the wrong thing with this Rika. I'm going to put the, the blood which is meant to be Lamala, meant to go, you know, upstairs, I'm going to put Lamata downstairs. Or the opposite, Lamata, the blood which is meant downstairs, Lamala will put on the upper half of the Mizbeach. I'll do it, you know, right away. Same day, meaning, I'm not going to, you know, have it uh, linger overnight or whatever. I'm going to do it today, but in the wrong place. Does that adversely impact the carbon? No, the carbon is still perfectly kosher, no problem. Right? Just because he planned on doing it. As long as he carries it out properly, does it, you know, the way it's bought. This type of plan does not, uh, uh, you know, impact the karma. So now, this was part A. Part B is, at the next point of the Avoida, he had a real harmful plan. I'm going to process the carbon outside of the base of Middash. Right? That's the Machshav of Chuslam Kaimai. Possibly my curse. The carbon now becomes possible, although there's no curious element here if one will eat this carbon. But Chutzla's Manoi plans on processing the carbon, feeding it to the Mizbeach or to the Kayhanim beyond its acceptable time. Okay, so here he misconstrued the time aspect of it. That's your classic Pigel, the most efficient type of current Pigel, the Chayavan of Kares. And if one should eat the carbon, there is curries. Okay, so part A of the of the Brisa discusses a kain who planned on putting the dam in the wrong place on the Mizbeach. That machshava doesn't harm the carbon. In which case, if he proceeds and has an additional machshava of chutzlam kaimai, the carbon becomes pasul, chutzas manai becomes pigul. Because let's recall. These only kick in, Chuzlum Kaim and Chuzman only kick in when there is nothing else interfering with the success, so to speak, of the carbon. Such as in this case where his initial thought was not very impactful, had no effect on the carbon. So it's a properly processed carbon, in which case it allows for, so to speak, Chuzlum Kaim or Chuzlum to be activated. And in the case of Chuzlum it's a 
classic pigel with curries. Part P of the B of the price. Lamacha. So he did the shechita with the kavana, the intent of placing the blood in the wrong place on the lokeya, on the mizbeach. Tomorrow, which is past the expiry date, right? In this case, it does disqualify the carbon. Puzzle. Why? We'll see in a minute why. So now once the carbon has an element of soul, if he comes back and adds another machshava of either chuslam kaim or chuslam no harm was done because the carbon is already possible and doesn't allow for more elements to be applied to the carbon. Chutzav achisha, he comes back and he adds another plan. Ben chuslam zmanoy, ben chuslam kaimoy, possible, ben my there's no curse. Because pigal never took effect since the carbon had already been deficient to begin with. Asks the Gemara. Now, according to Shmuel, who says, V'i, Shaloi bim kaimi kukame dami. If the blood on the wrong place, on the Mizbeach, is as though it reached its right place, according to Shmuel, right? Shaloi bim kaimi is like mekaimi. And Kapara gets accomplished. Hi, Apostle Pigalhu. So let's zero in on the second part of the price. He planned on applying the blood in a slightly wrong location on the Mizbeach. And then the next avoid the Yara, a Machshav of Pigal. We say, no, no, Pigal doesn't kick in because the carbon was already possible due to the first Machshav. When he planned on right, putting the blood in the wrong place, Lamachar tomorrow. The carbon is already possible on account of that plan. Why? Just because he planned on putting it in the wrong place? Why is it only puzzle? It should be pigal. Okay, he had a machshava. I'm doing the shkita to put the dam upstairs instead of downstairs tomorrow. That's pigal. The only thing that would interfere with Pigle is if there was a, some other deficiency getting in the way. That wouldn't allow Pigle to, to be activated. But in this case, there is no other deficiency. According to Shmuel, Shleibim Kaimai is like Mukaimai, it's like a proper Zrika. And since he had a mind to do it, Chus as the as per the Brysa, Lamacher, right? Lamacher, tomorrow, that's beyond the allowable time for Zrika. He meant to do Zrika the same day, not tomorrow. So he's planning on sort of serving blood to the Mizbeach tomorrow. That's, that's your classic pigal. Hi, Apostle. Why is it only Apostle? Pigal. Oma Mazutra. Here comes an interesting point. A new twist in the Allah of Pigal. Only a Zrika, the Shari Abbasar Ba'achilo. Only a type of Zrika, which actually takes you to your destination. The full nine yards, which enables the flesh for consumption. A proper zrika, in its proper location, in its precise mocha, that can't theoretically bring also pigal, if he would have a machshava of chutz on that. But zrika delishai basa b'achila. But, a zrika such as this one, shleibim kaimai, which, as Shmuel told us yesterday, doesn't allow the flesh to be consumed. It's not a proper zrika. It's partially proper, but partially improper. <laughs> it only does a half job. Zrika d'leshayi basa b'achila lo yimais pigal. That zrika cannot play a role in pigal. That explains why there's no pigal. Amalei ravash le mazrutim. Nalacha milsa. I mean, this is a huge chid. How do you know this fact? Tachsiv. Well, the answer is the Pasuk says so. V'ma'achal ya'achal m'sar zevach shlama. Pigal yeh. Pasuk says, look, don't eat pigal. We learn from here. Pigal only applies Misha Pikula Garamloi. Only in a situation where the only reason why you're not eating it is because of the pigal factor. That's the only deficiency. The Yatza says, as opposed to our case, where the Zrika was upstairs instead of downstairs, etc. 
Shame Pikula Garamlo. Pikula isn't the only factor at play. That this allows consumption of the flesh. There's another reason why you can't eat it. So when there's another factor at play, Pigul does not kick in. So if that's true, that there's no Pigul factor, because which is not a proper Zerika, so then it shouldn't be possible either. This Machshav of, uh, you know, doing the Zerika tomorrow, you know, in the wrong place in Mizbeah, if we say Pigul doesn't uh, kick in, so why is it even possible? Amar of Nachmar Yitzchak, I'll tell you why. It's no worse than if a kind of thought, he planned, on letting the blood stay overnight. No, leaving it till tomorrow. So even though technically it's not a machshav of Pigel, Pigel is specific to where he planned on serving it to the Mizbeach tomorrow. But he just plans on leaving it overnight, leaving it alone. So though it's not Pigel, but it would be possible. Valiba, in accordance with the Shita of the Rabbi Yehuda, who says this type of plan makes it possible. So likewise, now a story. He does a shchito with the intent or the plan of placing the blood on the mizbeach, but in the wrong place on the mizbeach tomorrow. The reason why, the reason why it's possible, it's no worse than machshavas inuach. We plan on you know letting it stay overnight and expiring, which makes it possible. Okay, so this pretty much wraps up the first approach to the Mishnah, which was Shmuel's approach. That dam, which was placed on the upper part instead of the lower part of the Mizbech, etc., etc., still accomplishes Kapara. It's close enough. It accomplishes Kapara based on the Pasuk of Vani Nasatev Lachem al Mizbech Lachaper, but there's no Heter Achil on the Basu. Here comes Rishlakish, who likewise adopts Shmuel's approach that the um, theoretically the carbon could be kosher. However, he's a little bit, uh, he questions Shmuel's approach to the Mishnah because the Mishnah does say that the carbon is puzzle. That's the words in the Mishnah. Puzzle of by Karas. So Shmuel learned puzzle just means although it's machaper, but the owner shouldn't be eating it. The, the, you know, the, the, the process wasn't done in an ideal way so the busser is not meant for Achila. Rosh Lakish says no. Rosh Lakish says no. Pasal, pasal mamash. Of course, the word pasal means literally it's pasal. But really, I agree with Shmuel in theory. Blood placed upstairs instead of downstairs, etc., is considered having uh, come close enough to its destination, and in fact, the carbon is, is kosher. So why is the mission say pasal? Well, the question answers like this. The Pasuk which says that even this is a proper carbon, that's because it was done without any additional diversions. There were no uh, discussions of, you know, misconstruing the carbon. There was no plans of doing, you know, so the, uh, the carbon is fine. Our mission which says that it's possible, speaking about a fellow who added another point, aside from putting the blood elsewhere, Upstairs, down. He also had a machshava of chusas mare. I'm going to do it tomorrow, next week. In this case, the carbon is possible. There's no pigle, as we explained before, because unless there's rikas mater ba'chila, there's no pigle. But it's possible. So conceptually, Rish Lagash holds like Shmuel. Zrikas shlebim kaimai. Accomplishes kapar. But then the Mishnah wouldn't say possible. The answer is the Mishnah is speaking about that there's an additional factor as well. There was a machshava chuslizmani which makes it possible. So since Rishlokish and Shmuel are pretty much on the same track, so all those kashas we asked on Shmuel from those Mishnahs were, it seems like, It has to be redone and all that. These are all conscious and rishlagish as well. So, to announce we had the Mishnah in the second parish, Chishev Esanitanin, Lamata, Lamala, Lamala. So, all those Mishnahs and the Brises 
can be repeated as a kash on Rosh Lakish as well. So the Gemara sort of takes us through a shortcut instead of going through all the twists and turns. <laughs> and until you get to the final point, which was the terrorist we answered before. So pretty much we took a shortcut throughout the whole, through the whole Ahmed. The same uh, questions and answers that apply to Shmuel will apply to Rosh Lakish as well. Okay, Rabbi Yechonam, here comes a third sheet. He disagrees, totally disagrees. He says, Dam, which is supposed to be above the Chut HaSikra, the, uh, dividing, the red dividing line, is meant to stay upstairs and not downstairs, and vice versa. You can't mix and match. Zerikish Lebim Kaimai is not Kibim Kaimai Dami. It doesn't work. The government's possible. Rabbi Yechonam, Eidi Ve'idi. So whether our Mishnah, which says that it's possible, and whether the Mishnah further on that uh, in the second parak, which seems to say that you can redo it, Shinasa Mishtik was speaking that Shinasa Mishtik, there was no uh, additional, you know, uh, nefarious plans of doing things, you know, the wrong way. The only thing that happened was practically he put the blood on the wrong spot on the Mizbeach. I disagree with Shmuel. It's like he put it on the like he spilled it on the floor. Now the Allah is. Once the blood was in a skabil and a kli and then it spilled on the floor, you can collect it and redo the whole Zerika again. That's the Allah. And that explains the difference between our Mishnah, which says puzzle. And the Mishnah later on, which says you can redo it. Mishnah there is speaking that you can still salvage some, you know, primary blood of the animal to redo the whole process. Mishnah is speaking, there's nothing left. It's all used up. It's too late. So, Karma is totally possible unless you can salvage some more blood and redo the process. It's not. Now let's go back to our Mishnah, which ends with the. Phrase, possible vein by karis. Karma is possible because the blood was put in the wrong place, but there's no karis. Now why must the Mishnah point out that there's no karis? Why would I think there is? So Mishnah with the Rish Lakish, Hainu the Tani, possible vein by karis. Quite the Rish Lakish, I can understand the point of the Mishnah. Because we're speaking that he had a machshav, a chutz and in the Chiddush, there's still no karis because this type of quasi, you know, qualified, quasi acceptable uh, zrika doesn't really make pickle. El Rabbi Yechanan, B'Kont Rabbi Yechanan, that the only deficiency in the mission is strictly the fact that it was placed in the wrong location. There was no machshava. My my chorus. Why does the mission have to elaborate that there's no chorus? Kashi. In fact, this is an un- unresolvable at this point, unresolvable question. Next question. Or Shmuel, according to Shmuel, who explains that. When the Mishnah says puzzle, it just means that the Basra is puzzle because the Zmika was in the wrong place. My aim occurs. So why does Mishnah add aim occurs? Why would I think there's curse? So, the Mishnah means like this. Im Nasa Machshava. The Mishnah is adding another twist. If theoretically he would have added another Machshava of Chusla's money, which typically generates Pigle with curries. But in this case, since the karma was deficient to begin with, puzzle aim occurs, there's no curse. As we explained, because the Zmika, which cannot be matter, the Basra for Achila cannot generate Pigle. Next question, Rabbi Echna. Just collect it off the Mizbeh. It's like the blood spilled out of the container onto the floor. Collect it and redo it. Why does the mission say you're done? If you can't find more Dama Nefesh in the end, just pick up this very blood that's spilled on the floor and reapply it. Because nothing was done. There was no Zrika done at all. True, it reached the Mizbech. But when you're Bechner, it's worthless. It was upstairs instead of downstairs. The answer is no. Even Rabbechner agrees to a certain extent the process was completed. The file was closed. The case is done. Because once the blood reaches the Mizbech, even in the wrong place on the Mizbeach, it's a point of no return. So we look at the Amalai Asfenu. The mission is going like the Shita, which says, in this case, you can't recollect it. 
Once it reaches the Mizbech in some context, it's over. Where do we find this opinion? Oh, it's Rabbi Yechna speaking. How come them all agree? Regarding blood which was meant to go upstairs and it was placed upstairs. Or the blood that was meant to be placed lamata downstairs, which was placed downstairs. But like let's say there was something wrong, there was a machshava pisop soul, or he did it with his left hand. But since it reached the right location, like yes, it can't be collected. It's over, it's done. File is closed. The only machlekes will be Allah if it was placed in the wrong location on the Mizbeach. Blood which was meant to be on the other po- upper portion was placed down, downstairs. Or, it's first so, lamato, shinsan lamalo. In this case, we have a machlekes. Can the blood be recollected and reapplied? Too late, you can't recollect it because once it reached the Mizbeach, it's week is over. You had, you had one chance and you, and you, and you blew it. Rabbi Shimon he says, no, in fact, it's since it's in the wrong place. It's like it's pulled on the floor, no different than the floor. You can recollect it and redo it. Now Mishnah holds like Rabbi Yaisi. You can't recollect it in this case. That explains why the file is closed. There's actually another machlek, another uh, way to explain this machlek. If Chizda Amar Avimi, he says, He says, actually, everybody agrees. If the blood that was placed, uh, that was supposed to be downstairs, was placed on the upper portion, you can't recollect it. Because it was on the Mizbeach. It's done. But Koshkin certainly be Netanan Lamalo. Shinasan Lamato. Certainly blood which was meant to be upstairs and eventually would trickle down, down and he placed it down. Certainly in that case, you can't redo it. You know why? Because inevitably that blood would have trickled downstairs. So technically, I should say practically, um, it, it sort of belongs there. Eventually it gets there. So by placing it downstairs, you really brought it to its destination. Since the upper bloods, Lamata and Bain are really slated to trickle downstairs. So in these cases, you can't uh, redo it. If you confuse the Mizbeachs, the blood was meant to be placed on the internal Mizbeach and the Heichel that was placed on the external Mizbeach and the Azara, or vice versa, Bechutz, Shnas Nafnim. Here we have a disagreement if it could be redone. Rabbi Yisrael Yasfen, you can recollect it and reapply it. Rabbi Shemuel Yasfen, you can't do it. But certainly when it comes to upstairs, downstairs, the Mizbeach, everybody holds. Once it applied, once it was applied, it stays there. And that explains our Mishnah as well. You can't redo it because it reached the Mizbeach. Okay, so bottom line is, we had an interesting uh, novel chiddush. Even according to Rabbi Yechna, even according to that shita that shaloi bim kaima, shaloi bim kaima, love kim kaima dami. So in contrast to Shmuel, and the Rish Lakish who held that once the blood reaches anywhere in the mizbeach, you've accomplished kapara. Rabbi Yechna disagrees. No kapara was accomplished at all. But still, in terms of the question, why can't you just recollect and redo it? No, after all, it reached its destination somewhat. It got to the mizbeach. You can't consider it like it's spilled out on the floor, in which case, case closed. Unless you can, you know, find some more blood by the animal, but otherwise you can't take this very blood and, re- and redo it. Now the Gemara will bring another so- raya support to this concept. That even though the carbon is possible, but to a certain extent the process had been completed, shows over, and cannot be rectified. We find the same thing in a mission. Actually, in a brace. Rabbi Yehimer, zayis yaila. So, just a short intro before we begin this uh, discussion. There's a halacha called im alu la yerdu. Even if the carbon is deficient for whatever reason, for the most part, we say that once it reaches the mizbeach, let's say it was an oila, something went wrong, and some kain by mistake put it on the mizbeach, you leave it up there. The mizbeach sort of absorbed it. Incorporated, it's like a ir miklat, like a city of refuge for a murderer, right? Once he's there, you can't get. Once the carbon reaches the mizbeach, this is a whole parak later on in Zvachem Bezer Hashem. Im Once it's up there, you don't take it down. Does it apply to every single deficiency, every single case of psul, regardless of its severity? Says Rabbi hold it. There are three exceptions. Zois 
is an exception. He, this, ha, ha, oila, only the oila. So it rules out three situations where this concept of mizbech absorption, not allowing it to be removed, there, doesn't apply in these cases. Hare elugil mumiutim, these are three exceptions to the rule, pratna shlobalayla. We exclude a case where the Yakar Moshechta at night, which is uh, not at all a time for service. Or or the blood was spilled out, and this is the uh, focal point of our discussion now. So again, if the blood of a carbon spilled straight from the neck to the floor, in that case, it was a non-starter, it never got started. A Krova was never initiated, it never inaugurated, never started, in which case, it, it doesn't belong in the Mizbech at all, even if it's up there, you take it down. Thirdly, the blood was taken out of the, you know, the, the curtains, so to speak, the, the Beis HaMikdash. In these three cases, it also tailored, even if it was placed on the Mizbech, you remove it. Okay, so that's Rosh Hashim's Chidush, Rabbi's Chidush. These three cases, and uh, what interests us right now is the middle case. Spilled blood, it's a non-starter. Rabbi Shimon uh, takes issue. He says, no. He says, even in these cases, um, the Allah would apply, meaning if the carbon was actually transported up on the Mizbech, it stays there. He says, look, the Pasuk speaks about an oil. Carbon oil, perhaps any oil, oil perhaps only a properly processed oil qualifies for this halach. Nine lorabes. What about all the other, uh, you know, deficient carbonis? And it will give us a list of many, many uh, examples of deficient carbonis. And actually, he's going to give us two categories, two bundles of cases. In list A, the halacha would apply. In list B, it would not apply. The halacha of im also right? What about a case where the shechita took place at night? The blood spilled out. Or blood was removed out of the Beis HaMikdash. These are the three cases that we refer to. He says, even in these cases, we say, once it was placed on his back, it's not removed. Furthermore, the carbon was left overnight. It was taken out of the Beis HaMikdash. It became Tum. Right? or an unqualified individual did the Kabbalah and or did the Yizrika sounds familiar or where the blood was placed downstairs instead of upstairs or the opposite or he mixed up the Mizbeach it should have been inside he placed it outside the blood was meant to be on the external Mizbeach he was put on the internal Mizbeach or let's say there was a Shalai Lishma issue. A Pesach Vachatas, these two carbonates, where the Lishma is critical, Shashchat and Shalai Lishma. He did the Shrita having another carbon in mind. So, what about all these examples? All these deficient carbonates. Menayin, how do we know that even there? Once they came on the Mizbech, they stay up there. Tamalaymar, Teirah, Oila. Here the word Oila means, Riba Teirah, Chala Oilen. Oila means something which ascended, something which was taken up. Oila. There is one Torah, one rule for all the island. Shem the once they went up, they don't come down. And this applies to the entire list. But here comes a second list uh, of carbonates, where which feature really, you know, inherently they're, they're inherently deficient, structurally deficient, so to speak. The the psal, didn't necessarily have to take place in the Beis HaMikdash, as per all the examples we just said. These are psalm which are like, they can pre, pre, predate, precede their arrival in the Beis HaMikdash. Trefa, crossbreed, all these types of deficiencies. They don't identify with the Mizbeach. In their cases, we say even if they were processed and placed on the Mizbeach, they are removed. So we'll call this list B. Okay? Perhaps I'll also include all the following deficient carbonis. An animal which interacted with a man, with a woman, one interacted with a man, one was set aside for idol worship, one that was worshipped, one was given to an immoral woman for her services, one was exchanged for a dog, a kalim, a crossbreed, a tray for one with an internal wound, critical wound, and one was born through cesarean. These are inherently deficient. Structurally defective. So these are not included. Tamalema Zeus. Zeus means only these, not those. Now who's to say we choose list A over list B? Umar Rais. Why do you uh, favor the rabbis to say to include the items in the first list? 
Loyitz Yaseilu to exclude the items in the second list. The answer is very simple. Marban Yaseilu, I prefer the first list. Shay Psalm B'Kodesh, because all those efficiencies occurred or may have occurred once they arrived in Beis HaMikdash. There are carbon-related deficiencies, procedural quirks, so to speak. So they're somewhat related to the Beis HaMikdash, to the Mizbeach, and they can identify the Mizbeach to the point that once they're up there, they stay there. As opposed to the second list, which are far into the Mizbeach. Or Moitzi and Yisraeli exclude the bottom list. Shalai Yoi Psalm B'Kodesh, because those Psalm could have happened before they came to Beis HaMikdash. They're not Mikdash or carbon-related or Krover-related Psalm. Okay, end of discussion. So pertaining to our discussion today, at any rate, what does the Bryce say? And his son in Lamata, the carbon whose blood was placed on the upper portion of the Mizbech instead of the lower, or the opposite. That carbon, although deficient, but once placed on the Mizbech, it stays there. For the Pilot of Yudah, we don't find that Rabbi disagrees. As he did in the case of Nishbach Dama, where the blood spilled out. Apparently, he does not consider this to be spilled blood. The fact is, it got to the Mizbech, although in the wrong place. But nevertheless, Mizbech is Mizbech. My time, why? So, why is this different? Lav Mishum de Kalti Mizbech. Apparently, because even Rabbi agrees that once the blood reaches the Mizbech in some context, Mizbech absorbed it. And that. Uh, is considered somewhat qualifying to the extent that if the carbon was not placed on the Mizbech, it stays there. So, pertaining to our earlier discussion, we see from here, we can conclude definitively that even blood which reached the wrong point in the Mizbech, upstairs instead of downstairs, etc., etc. Although the, the carbon is perhaps not kosher, according to coming lab. it's not considered like Mekayma, it's not considered having reached its proper location. But to a certain extent, the process was completed. It's not like it was spilled on the floor. It got to the Mizbech. The process was completed. The file was closed. That explains why you can't just collect the blood and start again. It's over. It's done with. As we had said earlier. Okay, let's just see another piece and then we'll recap the circuit. Amr Belazer. Mizbech apnimi mekadosh psulim. Just like we spoke about the external mizbech absorbing even deficient carbonates to the extent that we don't take it off. Likewise, same status applies to the internal mizbech, the one made out of gold, which is much smaller and more you know, versatile. The Gemara calls it a klesharis. It wasn't really a struck, uh, you know, uh, 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 like the external mizbech was more of a structure, a stone structure connected to the ground. The internal one was a klesharis. But uh, in a way, it has the same status. It's, it's, it's mikadesh, the psulin. Which are placed above it. My Kamashman, what's the point of Rabbi Lezer? We already have a Mishnah. Hanatan of So he spoke about the uh, the blood which was placed in the wrong Mizbeach. Right? Instead of the um, blood being placed on the external Mizbeach, it was placed internally. Um, and we concluded that even the Rabbi Huda agrees, it's not considered like the blood was spilled on the floor. So clearly, the Mizbech HaPnimi has the power to absorb even uh, material which doesn't belong there. Right? So, if only from that price, I would think, perhaps that only applies to blood. Although misplaced blood, but uh, blood is blood. The fact is, the Chazile, blood belongs, you know, in some context, belongs on Mizbech HaPnimi. Some carbonus is blood go there, right? So since this material relates to it, so it connects to it. Abel kaimitz lechazle, but if a kaimitz of a kmitza, flower, placed on his mechap nimi, it doesn't belong there. There's no kaimitz ever placed here. Not of this mincha, not of any other mincha. Aim away, perhaps. Mizbech wouldn't absorb it. Kamash won the point as it does. It absorbs any carbon material. Mesbech comes a kasha. Kteri zora. So also the gabi mizbech teri. So kteri zora means incense that was uh, donated. It's far. It doesn't belong on the Mizbech HaPnimi, which is meant to uh, take only, you know, publicly offered Kteris, but not privately donated Kteris. Nevertheless, if it was placed, she also legam Mizbech the Pnimi Mizbech Teret. So you think, what's that? You would think it stays in no Teret. You have to remove it. 
שאין לך מקדש פסולים, אלא מזבח החיצי, ברור לי. כי זה לא מזבח, זה לא יכול להתעזרב, ולקורפרט את הפישן מטריאלס, זה לא יכול להתעזרב מזבח. על דברים שהם טיפוליים שם, מטריאלס שהם אפשריים לזה. חיצון אין, אז אנחנו למדנו מהבריסה, רק המטריאל הזה יש לו את היכולת הזאת, פנימי לב, אבל לא המטריאל הזה, זה 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 We thought we were talking about the internal. No, the external one doesn't have the power to absorb it. She'ein mezbech ha'chitzim mekadosh p'sulim el ha'roi lai. Because the mezbech ha'chitzim can only be mekadosh, can only sanctify, absorb, incorporate deficient materials. If they are, if these are materials which are typically appropriate for that mezbech. There's nothing wrong with them, but the actual material is typically brought here. So it stays. As opposed to k'tiris, which is never placed on the mezbech ha'chitzim. It doesn't belong there. It's foreign material. But the pnimi is even stronger. But pnimi, but the internal was bech bein roiloi, bein shein roiloi, will have this effect on materials that are even, even never brought there. Whether it's roiloi, whether this material is typical for the bech, or even shein roiloi, which is not typical. My time, you know why? It's just the opposite. We thought we thought the bech achitzin is stronger. No, it's the opposite. Bech apnimi is more powerful than the chitzin. You know why? My time, a high ritzba. In contrast to the Mizbech HaChitzim, which is rich, but it's part of the floor, it's part of the structure. It was never sanctified with the Shem and HaMishka, with the special anointed oil, anointment oil, by Klisharis, as opposed to the internal Mizbech, which is a Klisharis, it's a holy vessel, which was anointed with the Shem and HaMishka, in which case its level of Klusha is higher and surpasses the external Mizbech, and can be Mekadish, even things which are not roi for it, including Dam Kaimetz and any type of Kteris. Okay, let's just recap today's sugya before we continue to the next mission. So, the reference point was our Mishnah back on the Chavav Amad Aleph. Blood was placed on the Mizbech on the wrong place. Upstairs, downstairs, etc. Et we have two approaches to the Mishnah, which concludes with the words Pasal. Pasal, but there's no karas. That's the ending of the Mishnah. Shmuel explains, really the carbon is kosher. It just means Pasal, you can't eat the, the Basra. Because he learns from a Pasik, Shalai bim kaimin, kim kaimin dami. Once the blood reaches anyway on the Mizbech, Kapar is accomplished. But as we explained, uh, Pigel can never uh, you know, apply in this case because uh, it's not as rica that is Mater Basar Ba'achila. So even if you had a Machshav of Pigel, the carbon only remains possible, but not, uh, there's no curry's factor. Rosh Lakish learns like, uh, in, in concept like Shmuel, but he says the reason why the mission did say possible is because we actually had a Machshav of, of uh, Shleib Bismani, that actually makes the entire carbon possible. Completely. But you're right, without any machshav, it's just wrong placement of dam would still allow the carbon to go through and be mechap. Rabbi Yechon disagrees vehemently, he says, no, Shleib Bim Kaimai, is Lavkim Kaimai, there's no Zrika, there's no Kapara here. And that triggered the next question, so just to collect the blood and redo the whole thing again. The answer is, even Rabbi Yechon agrees that once it reached the Mizbech, in some way, to some, in some context. This was proven from the whole discussion of the, uh, the cases of different psulim. We proved that even this type of case where the blood was placed in the wrong location on Mizbech, it is deemed having arrived at Mizbech, the process is done, the file is closed, and you can't redo it. And we discussed the Allah of him also, even a carbon which is possible, once placed on Mizbech, stays there. For the most part, we have some exceptions, or readers' exceptions, and Reb Shimon's exceptions. And we uh, concluded that Mizbech HaPnimi, in a way, is even more powerful than Mizbech HaChitzayin. It's Mekadesh, even things which are typically not brought to Mizbech HaPnimi. Why? Because it's a Klisharis that had Meshicha of the Shem and Amishcha. Says the mission. We speak so much about Chos Tlazman, Chos Tlam Kaimai. Well, uh, this is where, uh, where it happens. In this mission, Shaykhad is Hazevach, Lizrik is Dome Vachutz. He did a Shechit on the carbon. And expresses intention, plan to do the zrika of the blood outside the base That's called chutzlam kaimai. Or he makes his dami or part of the blood. Next example, a hak to remove vechutz to burn the fats outside the base or part of the fats. Or he makes his Or to eat the flesh of the carbon outside, 
Now, when we speak about bachutz, by the way, depends which carbon. Kachim, kachim kadashim like a chatas must be eaten in the azara. So bachutz here means outside the azara. Versus kachim kalim like a shlamim, you have the whole city. So bachutz means outside the city. So it's all a matter of you know relative to its makar. Here comes another example, which is going to be the focal point of the next sugi in the Gemara. So you had a plan to eat the flesh outside, the actual meat, or even a kazayis amount of the oir ha'alya, the uh, thin, fleshy, pliable skin around the tail, which is somewhat a cross between, between uh, you know, skin and flesh. Apparently the mission considers that to be edible, and the machshava, to eat it outside, is considered pigal. So in all these cases, sorry, it makes it chuslam kaimai, and it's possible that in by kares, the carbon is possible, but there's no kares involved. Because chuslam kaimai is only possible without kares. However, here comes chuslam's money. He does a shchit lizrek damalumacha to apply the blood on his back tomorrow. Or part of the blood, mixes damalumacha. Or to offer the fats on the Mizbeach tomorrow, like the Emurv Lamachar. Or part of the Mixes Dom Emurv Lamachar. Or to eat the flesh tomorrow, or in a week's time, past the expiry date. Lechop Sar Lamachar. Or part of it. Or Kazayim Sar Lamachar. Or the tail uh, skin, which is deemed like a uh, basar in this context. Or Lechel Kazayis Mor Ali Lamachar. Here's your classic pigle to the point that it triggers curries. The Chayyavel of curries, if one eats the curry even now. During the allowable peri- period, the carbon was now labeled pigal, and it triggers a curse liability. Okay, we'll pick it up tomorrow, Hashem. All the best to you, and that's Lacharaba.